Hi, this is Frankie from About Script, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to take a cloth and have it deform over an object. And it's going to fall just based on gravity, so that's why we have it placed above this object, just a cube and a plane. First thing we want to do is press Control A and apply our scales, just in case they're a little bit off. And then we want to come over to our Physics tab, which is all the way on the right inside our Property Editor. And this is obviously a cloth, and this is our collision object. So the cloth is going to fall and collide with the collision object, and it's going to deform. So uh, for most things, we can use our cloth presets. Now I've found that a lot of times, even though this looks like a cotton material, we might want to set it to something such as denim or leather, just because it seems to give it a nicer look, even if it's not as realistic. We're just going to set it to cotton for this tutorial, though. Um, so now our cloth collision objects are options. We want to check self-collision. A lot of times people don't do this, and then the cloth is going through itself, which does not look realistic at all. And we want to leave our cloth cache open, and we're going to say bake all dynamics. And what this is going to do is have our cloth land flat on the cube and not deform at all. So you're probably wondering why. We're going to free all of our bakes and go into edit mode and you notice that our cloth just has four vertices. So we have two ways we can fix this. We can press W and just subdivide it a ton of times or we can come over here and apply or add a modifier of subdivision surface. Now we have to move this above our cloth modifier if we forgot to add it first and we're going to set our um, subsurf to 4 and render at 4 and then use the simple one, uh, the simple version. So now you can see that there's all these different lines. Maybe increase it a few more times. And so now when we go and um, run our simulation again, we're going to say bake all dynamics. And you notice that it's taking much longer to run. And a lot of times, since we're just rendering a still image, we don't need it to render all 250 frames. So at any point, you can hit escape when you think it's done enough frames, and then see how it looks at the end of that animation. So it's falling nice and everything on top of our uh, cube here. However, like I said, um, a lot of times we want to set it to something a little more structured, such as denim. And we free all of our bakes, and then we're going to bake again. And what this is going to do is um, some things such as um, increasing the blend, uh, the blending, or sorry, the, uh, I can't think of the word for it right now, but basically it means are we going to have a lot of little, little tiny bends in our fabric, or is it going to be large wrinkles? The wrinkle coefficient is the name of it. So once we're satisfied with enough frames, we can go back and see how it looks. And for example, there, I think it looks pretty nice. So you see, we now have a nice deformed cloth around our object. And what you might want to do for the final animation is let it finish so that it'll be at an almost rested state. However, note that we don't have real um, a real environment set up as far as physics go. So it's not going to have humidity in the air and other things that will actually cause it to stop moving completely. It will always be moving, well, at least well past 250 frames. That's going to be it for this video, so have fun, and uh, if you can post a video response with what you did with this. Um, these textures are available on CG Textures. Um, I can't include them with this due to the licensing, however I can show it in the video by fair use. And um, check them out. A uh, link to CG Textures will be in the description. So go out and grab a texture library.